Hey viewers, check this out. I was at a party and I saw this vintage homemade fat bike. Back in the 90s, you couldn't just walk into a bike shop and buy a fat bike. They didn't exist, except for the ones that people made themselves. And you couldn't buy the fat tires. So what they would do is they'd, they'd take like two rims side by side and uh, put double wide tires on there and custom build these fat bikes that could ride on snow and mud and stuff so anyway that's what this bike is so let me go and show you some of the details of this cool bike now the frame has GT stickers on it but it's actually a Cannondale and uh, looking at Cannondale catalogs I believe it's from 1991 now what makes a fat bike a fat bike are the big wide fat tires that allow you to go off-road on soft terrain like mud and snow. But back in the 90s, they didn't sell those tires. They didn't sell those big wide rims like that. So what these guys would do is they'd take some uh, rims, put them, stack them side by side, put some mountain bike tires on them to make their own wide fat tires that would allow them to go off-road on those soft terrain like that. So the heart of this bike here are these double wide wheels and tires. Now to build the double wide wheels, uh, he couldn't have the two rims just side by side because otherwise uh, the two tires would be just crammed up against each other. There just wouldn't be enough room. So what he had to do was take a third rim and sandwich it between the two regular rims that he was going to mount the tires on. And so he uh, used glue to kind of glue that in place between the two outside rims. Then he also used these little braces on here uh, that are mounted into the two outside rims and it looks like they're held in place uh, using pop rivets. And now another modification that he had to, to make was to the hubs. Since now he had two rims, he had twice as many spokes and so he was going to need twice as many holes in the hubs for all those spokes. So they're both high flange hubs on the front and the back. Uh, what he did on the rear was he drilled an extra set of holes in between all the original holes and on the front one he drilled uh, an extra set of holes just down below the original holes. Now with all these spokes and these double rims he had to play with the lacing patterns and he wanted to be able to help pull the rims in together. So what it looks like is that the spokes on the outside of the flanges go to the rims on that side, but the spokes that on the inside of the flanges cross over to the opposite side rim that helps pull them in together. Now because the wheels were significantly wider, he had to make some modifications. So on the front end, he had some RockShox Mag 21s and it looks like he fabricated a whole new fork crown on there to move the tubes wider. And since the tubes were wider, he had to cut the fork bridge there and then he had like a little uh, plate in between the two to kind of hold them together to keep them from turning there. The V-brakes look like they're the same, just mounted the exact same way, but he added a, a longer little rubber tube to uh, cover the cable. And then he added a uh, brake booster there and since uh, you, they didn't make them that wide at that point. He made one out of an old uh, chain ring. It's kind of a unique look there with the teeth there. But the brake booster, again, adds strength and helps keep the tubes from twisting uh, when you're applying the brakes. Now, since the fork was wider, he had to add a longer axle to the front wheel, and he had spacers on either side. Now, the longer the axle, the more prone it is to bending, so it's a solid axle, but to me, it looks like it's a thicker than stock axle up there. I don't know if somebody, if a manufacturer made a hub with a thicker axle and he just fabricated a longer one, or did he modify the hub to accept a thicker axle up there? I asked the builder and he didn't remember what he had done up there. Now looking at the rear triangle, it's hard to tell what was done. I compared it to pictures of other 1991 Cannondales and it looks very similar, but there's some welds on here that don't look stock, so the top part might have been whitened slightly. Uh, I am not sure. Now for gearing, he used a Shimano Nexus 7-speed eternally geared hub on the rear. Uh, my guess is that uh, the gearing in there would be just more protective from wet, muddy conditions than an exposed cassette with the railer system. Just a guess. On the front, he used a single chain ring crank set. It looks like a 32 tooth uh, chain ring up there. Uh, there is a derailleur on here, but it's being used as a chain tensioner. Now, another feature of this rear hub is that I believe this one would have had a roller brake in there, which may have been more efficient than a 
in wet, muddy conditions than uh, rim brakes. Now, it doesn't look like he added spacers on the rear, so the stock spacing of the Shimano Nexus hub might have uh, been fine. Uh, my guess is he probably had to play with the bottom bracket width on the front to get the chain line correct. Now, looking at the handlebars, on the right side, he has a Nexus shifter brake lever. Uh, no surprise there. But over on the left side, he has a Shimano servo wave action brake lever. Now, I was not familiar with those. I had to look it up. Um, but apparently, through a cam action, it allows the brake pads to be farther away from the rim that when you pull the lever, they move in fast, hit the, the rim, and then give nice solid action when they actually make contact. So that's kind of an interesting choice. I was not familiar with those. The rest of the bike looks fairly straightforward. The rear suspension, I believe, is stock to the Cannondale frame. It's got a rear fender. The seat post might be a suspension seat post, but I'm not sure. It's got bar ends, clipless pedals. I love the Swamp Thing label on there. Just totally cool. It's just an amazing build. Part of me is like going, oh, I'd love to build something like this, but these days I go buy a fat bike. You know, that's it's going to be better. But for this time in the 90s, when those fat bikes, you know, the commercial fat bikes were not available. This is just an amazing build. How far that somebody could go to do this. Just such a radical build. Uh, what do you what do you think? Let me know down in the comments. If I get more details, I'll include them in the description. I hope you found this interesting or useful. If you did, please click uh, like on my video. If you're not subscribed to my channel, click the subscribe button. Be sure to click the little bell so you get notified of new videos that come out. I'm always coming out with new videos. I'm over on Facebook, RJ the Bike Guy. Go over there, like that page. I post a ton of stuff over there. Have fun. And I have a webpage, rjthebikeguy.com. Go check that out. Anyway, thank you for watching.